This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. In the last video, we had started the physical properties of dental materials and we had covered the viscosity and the viscoelasticity. Now in this video, we are going to cover the creep. Okay, let us suppose we have a metal here and we have a heating element here. So because of this heating element, the temperature here would be near the melting range of this metal. Let us suppose that we are keeping the conditions like that. And then we are applying a constant force on this metal. It could be either compressive force means we will try to shorten the metal or it can be the tensile force means we will try to elongate the metal. And then with time we will measure the amount of strain means the amount of deformation that is the amount of lengthening in case of tension or amount of compression in case of compressive force we are getting. So that will be giving us the values of creep. So creep is defined as the time dependent plastic strain of a material under a static load or constant stress. So here keep in mind these things. First of all, it is a time dependent plastic strain. So what is plastic strain? Strain means deformation and plastic means that it cannot be reverted back to its original size, original form. Elastic means it will revert back and plastic means it will not revert back. So it is a time dependent plastic strain of a material under a static load and the load here is static and constant. And also keep here in mind that the temperature of the environment here in this case should be near the melting range of the metal. So two things are important here. The temperature and the static load or constant stress. Okay. Now how is creep important in prosthodontics? Because it can lead to unacceptable deformation of dental restorations. Example amalgam. Now, the thing with dental amalgam is that it begins to melt at temperatures only slightly above the room temperature. So, when we have it in our mouth, it is actually having this kind of environment here. Okay. So, when such patients who have amalgam restoration, they eat something hot and they clench their teeth in order to chew. In that cases, what will happen? the amalgam can undergo creep. Now the importance of creep can be interpreted by this graph. Here we can see that we have the creep curves for two kinds of amalgam. The conventional alloy that is the low copper amalgam and the high performance alloy that is the high copper amalgam. Now at any point of time you can see that for low copper amalgam it has a higher strain. For example, at 8, it has more strain. This only has this much strain, right? At 16, it has this much strain. But the high copper has less strain. Thus, we have a greater creep value in the low copper amalgam. That is why low copper amalgam is more susceptible to creep. Now, the question is why the low copper has more creep because in low copper amalgam we have tin which is 28 percent and this tin since its quantity is more it can lead to the formation of gamma 2 phase also low copper amalgam has less copper obviously the creep reducing property will be less that is why in low copper amalgam we have more creep so what will happen in such cases we will have marginal breakdown of the amalgam restoration so, it can lead to secondary decay. Now, the clinical significance of creep. Creep may eventually lead to the fracture failure of the material. 
It is believed to be a precursor to fracture at the edge of the amalgam fillings and ideally at temperatures 40 to 50 percent below the melting point, creep should be negligible. Means whatever the melting point of that metal is, 40 to 50 percent below that, the creep should be negligible. Okay. Now, what is the difference between flow and creep? The difference is in the time of application of load. Now, we use the term flow to describe the rheological properties of the amorphous materials like waxes, means the flow. Okay. But creep is used for the metals, not for the flowable things. It is used for the metals. Also, other difference is the time of application of load. Means in flow, it happens early in the lifetime of the material. But in creep, we allow the metal to mature and completely harden. And then we apply a constant force or load. So this was all about creep. I hope that the creep is not that creepy anymore. And you found the video helpful. If yes, don't forget to smash that like button. And also subscribe to my channel for more such videos. See you next time.